Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So today's video is going to be more of a wardrobe project as you've probably already seen by the title and thumbnail of this video. But spring is finally hitting here in beautiful British Columbia and I am in desperate need of some new pieces for my wardrobe. The usual spring items that I bring out of my closet this time of year don't currently fit me right now. And that's because I'm currently expecting baby number three. <laughs> Surprise! So I guess by the time this video comes out, I will almost be seven months along. So anyways, the dresses that I'm going to be making today are two sheared dresses. And so there'll definitely be room for my bump to grow because the dresses are quite stretchy. The fabric I'm using for these dresses, I have two different lovely fabrics that I've pulled from my stash. So the first is this beautiful, I believe it's called mulberry linen. So I picked this up think about a year and a half ago from a Pure Linen Envy. So if it's still on their site, I will link it down below. So I have this for one of my dresses, which I think is a beautiful spring color. And then the other fabric I have is this simple floral cotton that I believe I got from Overseas Fabrics. Again, they sell online, so if they still have this in stock, I will link it down below. So I'm very excited to have some spring summer dresses that will continue to fit me as this bump grows because oh my goodness, I'm gonna need it during the summer. So the dress style that I have planned is a sheared bodice and then it's gonna have three tiers on the skirt and I haven't decided fully on the sleeves yet. So that's just something I will figure out as I make these dresses. So the plan is, is I'm gonna be sewing both dresses, but since the style is fairly similar, I am only gonna show the sleeves for one dress so you don't have to see how they're constructed twice. So I think I have covered everything I need to cover. So let's get started. I did forget to mention something. This dress is not only maternity, it actually works for all body types as it just relies on your measurements. So feel free to join in and let me know if you're gonna make your own dress. To create the pattern, first you need to find your full bust measurement and times that by one and a half. Then divide that in two for the front and back pattern and add your seam allowance. So for example, my full bust is 45 inches and then I times that by 1.5 and that equals 67.5 inches. I would then divide that by two and get 33.75 inches. And from there, I would add my seam allowance, which is one inch for a total of 34.75. Now for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna round that up to 35 inches. Next, I need to draft the bodice pattern, and this is the shape that I'm going for. Now your measurements may be different, but here are the measurements that I used for my pattern. The length of your bodice depends on how high you want the bodice to sit, and for the arms eye width, this is how far you want the sleeve to sit on your shoulder. I measured mine from the side seam to just past my bra strap. And lastly, the arms eye height depends on how high your bodice sits. For the skirt, I used my total bodice measurement, which was now 70 inches, and times that by 1.5 to get 105 inches for the first tier, and then repeated those steps for each tier. And again, for simplicity's sake, I did round these numbers slightly a couple inches as it didn't make a huge difference to the shape. For the skirt length, I measured from my waist to where I wanted the skirt hem to fall and then divided the skirt up. Since mine was 36 inches, I first divided it into thirds and then took two inches from the top tier and added it to the bottom tier. And that way the tiers are each slightly longer than the one above them. This step is completely up to your preference, so it can be easily made into a maxi or a knee length dress depending on what you desire. Also, don't forget to add your seam allowance to the top and bottom of each tier as this isn't included in my measurements. Now another option for the bodice is to add the first tier length to the bottom of the bodice and instead use your hip measurement for the bottom width of the pattern. And by going with this option, the bodice is then more of a trapezoid shape than rectangular or square. And the second and third tier are created the same as before. This will make your skirt slightly narrower, but it is a good option if you have less fabric. And this is the method I ended up actually using for my dresses. And lastly, we have the sleeves. Now I used my over shoulder measurement and times that by 1.5 for a slightly gathered sleeve. And you can also use straps instead of sleeves. 
To save on paper, I decided to draft my sleeve and bodice pattern on the fold, so I had to cut out each piece twice. And because I keep getting questions about this, yes, those are magnets on the end of my scissors. And yes, I'm using them as a guide for my seam allowance so I don't have to measure it out. Once the bodice and sleeves were cut out, I then began cutting out the skirt tiers. Now because my fabric is a dress cotton, I was able to measure the tier length and then make a small snip and tear the length of fabric. This makes cutting tiers really quick and it usually tears on the straight of grain. But if you are planning on using this method, I definitely recommend you do a test tear first just to confirm that it works with the fabric that you're using because some fabrics do not like this method. Now, in some cases, you may have to piece your fabric together just because the yardage doesn't line up quite right. So for mine, I measured out my fabric beforehand and I knew that was going to be the case. So I decided to piece together my middle tier just to help kind of disguise it. But you will need to add extra seam allowance on the edges of the tier for this. And finally, because I had a little bit of fabric left over, and I love a dress with pockets, I decided to add some to my design. And with everything cut out, it was time to assemble. First, I serge the side seams on my bodice, and if you don't have a serger, I do have a video that I will leave in the description for other ways to finish raw edges. I then marked one inch up from the bottom of my bodice and pinned the pocket in place with the right sides together and stitched them in place. And repeated this on both sides for both the front and back. From there I lined up the pockets and pinned the edges of the bodice together and stitched around the edge. And then I pressed the seams open and turned the top of the bodice down by half an inch and pressed it in place. And then it was time for shearing. Now I began by winding bobbins by hand with an elastic thread. Now this must be done by hand to keep the thread from stretching. I used almost six bobbins for my first bodice. Once they were wound up, I set my machine for shearing, which is just a regular straight stitch, and used a stitch length between three and four. I definitely recommend testing a scrap of fabric to see what works best for your machine and for your fabric. And once everything is set up, it is time to shear the fabric. Now my rows are 3 eighths of an inch apart, which in my case is the width of my presser foot. The first couple rounds you may not see much of a difference, but as you continue to stitch, you will see the fabric begin to get tighter and tighter with each round. Now as a little tip, as you start stitching you'll want to keep an eye out for how close you are to the end of your bobbin before you start a new round. If you run out in the middle of a round it isn't the end of the world and I did that a couple times. So when that happened I backstitched a few times from where I ran out and then finished shearing and then once that was done I then tied the ends of the elastic together for extra security. Now this process does take a while and so I wanted to see just how long it would actually take me so I timed myself and finished just short of two and a half hours. So if you have a good movie or a podcast it definitely helps pass the time. Now once everything is shirred, I then took the bodice to my iron and gave everything a good steam. This helps to tighten everything up just a little bit more. But once it is steamed, you want to let it cool before you stretch it again. Now 
With the bodice set aside, it is time to start on the skirt. The first thing I started on was sewing together the lengths of fabric for each tier and then finishing the short ends with my serger. Also another tip, if you have a fabric that is directional, you want to make sure it's facing the right way before you sew all these strips together. Once that was done, I then hemmed the bottom of the third tier and added gathering stitches to the top of the third tier. And through the magic of editing, attached it to the bottom of the second tier. And repeated these steps once again with the second tier and attached it to the bodice. With the skirt attached to the bodice, it was time to start on the sleeves. First, I pinned and stitched the sleeve seam together and finished the edges. And then I pressed the neck edge under by half an inch and stitched it in place with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then hemmed up the bottom of the sleeve with a narrow double turned hem. Once that was done, I added a quarter inch elastic through the neck edge. The length of the elastic is to your preference, but mine was my shoulder length minus two inches. So I have a bit of a change of plans. I put the larger sleeve on the dress last night and then I tried it on and I didn't like it. So I am still using the same sleeve, but I have shortened it quite significantly. So it's much more of like a little shoulder cap sleeve now, and I like it so much more. So I'm going to show you how I did the alterations for this one on this sleeve, and then I can finish this dress up. To adjust my sleeve, first I removed the elastic I had put in the bottom. Then I measured the new sleeve length plus seam allowance and cut it to the new length. Now because I'd already cut the one side to the new length, I just placed the other side over top of it and then marked my sleeve and then trimmed it. Before hemming the bottom, I compared it to my original pattern and marked the new length so I could replicate it in the future if I desired. Once that was done, I hemmed the bottom of the sleeve, leaving a small opening for the elastic. To attach the sleeve, I matched up the side seams and the edge of the sleeve, and then stretching the bodice, pinned the rest of the sleeve in place. and very carefully stitched it in place, making sure that it was stretched evenly. And then I finished off the raw edge with my serger for a nice tidy finish. And lastly, I stitched the seam allowance down towards the sleeve to keep it nice and tidy and so the seam allowance wouldn't pop out of the neckline. So for the second dress, I've made a couple modifications. This is the pattern for the first one, and this is the pattern for the second one. So if you look here, I've made it about two inches shorter, and I've changed the angle of the armhole. So when I was looking at how to make these dresses, some of them I saw had the curved armhole, and some of them had a more slanted diagonal armhole. So I decided that I wanted to experiment, and so I'm trying both. So the first one was the curved one, and now I have my uh, essentially diagonal or angled uh, armhole. So because I've done that, I also need to change my sleeve pattern. So this sleeve pattern, the armhole matches the armhole on this one, just to make it easy for going in. And so for the, the second sleeve, I'm gonna essentially be using the same sleeve pattern, but I'm gonna be making some slight alterations. So I've 
copied or traced off a sleeve pattern from the original pattern and then I just change the armhole so it matches. So that is on there like that. So the next thing that I'm going to do is instead of having the gathered sleeve like before, I'm only going to do the gather on the neck section and then this is going to be turned into a flutter sleeve. So I'm going to get started on that and I'll show you the process. All right, so I have my sleeve pattern here. This is the arm's eye and this is the neckline. And so for this, now I'm just going to slash and spread this to create the flutter sleeve. Now, depending on how many flutters I want or how wide I want the sleeve, just depends on how many slashes I put in and how wide I make it. So this is going to be cut on the fold. So that's just a reminder for myself. Just gonna start drawing lines and each of these lines are gonna be one of the slashes I add to make the sleeve fluttery. Essentially what I'm doing is just cutting along the lines that I drew. I'm not cutting all the way through though. I just wanna leave a little hinge at the top. And this way, instead of like adding extra here or extra here, it actually creates better gathers and better distributes the fabric. That is cut. And now all I'm gonna do is just move these out just a little bit. And that will create the amount of ease in the pattern for the flutter sleeve. And then I just have to add pieces of paper in between them. I'm gonna make a quick mock-up of this and then I'm gonna to get to cutting. I was quite happy with the mock-up and so I began cutting out the sleeves for my second dress. I finished off the neck edge of my sleeve with my serger and then I pressed it and stitched it just like the first sleeve. For the sleeve seam, I opted for a French seam because it would likely be visible. And the French seam just gives it a nice clean finish on the interior. And then I hemmed the sleeve with a quarter inch turn and turn hem. To keep the hem tidy at the seam and to keep away the bulk, I did trim the seam allowance back to just under half an inch. And then I stitched the hem in place. And once that was done, I added the quarter inch wide elastic to the neck edge just like the first dress. So before I start the shearing on the second bodice, I want to do another little sample. This linen is quite a bit thicker than the dress linen that was used on the first dress. So that was my main reason for a sample. I also wanted to see how differently it would shear. So this one, the first, I guess one, two, three rows were half an inch. And then these ones were the three eighths of an inch that I did on the first bodice. One thing I've discovered with this linen is because it's like slightly thicker, 
I will need to put an elastic in the top row just to make sure that it's nice and snug because otherwise this likes to flip forward. So yeah, I, I like doing little samples of the fabric when I'm changing for shearing just because I know different fabric will behave differently. So yeah, I think I am going to do half inch for the top and then the rest are going to be three eighths. I just, I think I like the shearing better for the three eighths. Um, it would be interesting to try the half inch again on like a thinner fabric, but I think the three eighths is just tidier on the thicker linen that I have here. So now it's time to get to shearing again. The last one took me two and a half hours to shear the bodice. I'm going with two less rounds this time, so we'll see how long it takes this time. Surprisingly, I really cut my time down on the second bodice. All right, I have finished shearing the purple bodice, and before I steam it, I just wanted to show you the difference. So this is, the side seams are lined up here on this side, and that is how much of a difference there is between the thinner cotton and a thicker linen when shearing. So hopefully this still fits, um, but I'm going to steam it up and see what kind of difference that makes. All right, I've steamed this one up, and so you can see it's shrunk down quite a bit after steaming. So there is still a bit of a difference because this is, of course, a thinner cotton and this is a thicker linen. Overall, this looks really good, and uh, I'm excited to get the different sleeves on this guy. Let's get started. I attached the sleeves to the bodice in the same manner as before, and they went in quite nicely. Now, as I mentioned before, the second dress does have a slightly different arm's eye shape because I was curious about how it would come out. And I think just for my preference, I prefer the more diagonal sleeve shape than the rounded one because I feel like it lines up with the shoulder nicer and it makes it easier to bring the sleeve a little higher onto the shoulder as well. But again, it's personal preference and whichever one you pick, I'm sure it'll look lovely either way. And with both dresses done, it's time for the reveal. And it is done. I absolutely love how the sleeves came out on this one. They are so floaty and floofy and romantic and I just absolutely love them. So I would love to know which dress was your favorite, the lilac one or the floral one. Leave your comments down below and I'd also love to know if you're going to be making a shared summer dress of your own. I am going to be pretty quiet on this channel for the remainder of the month. I think I have a short planned and that's pretty much it. Just because I really want to focus on my summer project and because I have a pretty set deadline, I do need to really get that done before the summer starts. So I hope you have a lovely day and if you are celebrating, happy Mother's Day and I will see you next time. Bye! Before I go, I just want to ask, did any of you notice that I've been alternating between pink and blue thumbnails for my main videos on the channel? Let me know if you've spotted that Easter egg in the comments. Let's see that baby bump. What? Yeah, baby. Just a little bit, not a lot. We're going for a whimsical, not avalanche. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Stop. Whimsical. Whimsical. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh.
<laughs> oh, you still filming?